coronavirus is everywhere. It's all over the news, social media, and if you have overprotective parents, they're most likely gonna give you sanitary wipes to make sure you don't get sick. No joke, I've gotten so many from my mom and dad, they're very paranoid. This deadly disease is spreading so fast. In the span of three months, there's over 100,000 cases worldwide of this very deadly disease. And because of that, the global economy is actually taking a risk. And this is exactly why the coronavirus is causing the start of a recession. Now you're probably like, Jay, what the heck is a recession? Well, don't worry. In today's video, we're gonna talk about what will happen when the coronavirus starts the recession and what it will mean for you as a viewer or starting a business. We're gonna talk about it all. All you gotta do if you wanna know more is keep on watching. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Jade and I combine psychology and marketing on this YouTube channel and I'm really excited to talk about today's topic. Honestly, I am a little bit concerned. I just came back from a conference called Playlist Live and no joke, everybody on the flight going there had a mask on and it literally looked like a scene from a movie. It's absolutely insane. All the masks are gone at my store. There's no more hand sanitizer and a lot of schools are shutting down as well. So before we go into why the coronavirus is gonna affect businesses, I wanna make a quick disclaimer and just make sure that I'm not coming across insensitive. I know that at the end of the day, the health of our families and friends are way more important than how the economy is running. But I do have to say, as someone who has their own business and I do have to put food on the table, it is concerning that the coronavirus not only affects, you know, our physical health, but also the health of our businesses and our culture, really. So how did the coronavirus get so big as it is today? I'm an entrepreneur. I am not a doctor. The coronavirus originated in Wuhan, China, and ever since then, it has spread all around the world. The reason why it has been such a big and fast spreading disease is primarily due to the trade. And if you guys don't know, basically during the time of Chinese New Year earlier this year, which is around like January, February, it's a time where people in China and all over the world really come there and celebrate the new year. And I'm half Chinese, so I can definitely say that this is a huge, huge celebration. People are traveling to see their families. So literally because this is the biggest event of the year, you know, the disease spread so fast because people were traveling in airports so quickly. So it's very obvious that this disease is spreading so fast. But what has this to do with anything with the global economy? Well, let's get started with the definition of a recession. A recession is a business cycle contraction when there's a general decline in economic activity. Okay, so if you're like, Jade, what the heck does that mean? What is still a recession? Let me explain. So there's three moving parts you need to know. There's the consumers, there's the brand, and there's the manufacturer. Okay, so everything affects each other and it's kind of like a domino effect. So just imagine that in your head. What's happening right now is literally, I just got a phone call from my friends back in college saying their classes are being canceled. So just think about it in this way. If people are not going out as much, they're not eating food, they're not shopping because they're staying home to be safe from the virus, you know, they're not going to spend as much money. When a consumer doesn't spend enough money, you know, the brand gets affected directly, right? You know, some companies, I'm not talking about big corporate companies, I'm talking about like small family businesses that are relying on customers for their income to support their family, right? They're going to get hit. And when they don't get enough money to pay their bills, or maybe they're taking credit card loans, you know, they might lose their houses and leave on the street. I'm not joking. It's not an exact and not only that, if the brands aren't able to, you know, keep going, manufacturers are getting hit because if the brands are the one buying from them, suddenly manufacturers in China or wherever could be losing their own business as well. So everybody gets affected and the whole loop will keep getting more vigorous and intense because the more consumers don't spend as much and they're staying at home, all everybody gets affected more and then there's less resources. Honestly, a recession does sound super scary, but the good news is there are ways to learn more about it so we can actually overcome it. I'm going to talk about the three things you need to know when a recession does happen because it's already starting. If you guys don't know, stocks are plummeting and people are already going out less and a lot of malls and businesses are already like emptying out. So this is just the start of a recession. Like I mentioned in the intro, the first thing that will happen is consumer confidence will go down. Basically, like I mentioned, people will stay at home more. They're really reluctant to maybe go out to amusement parks, concert, buy tickets, get food. They're more likely to just stay at home and be safe. And in the long-term picture, more and more people might have pessimistic views of the future. They might invest less in businesses. They might, you know, sell things because they're scared. You know, when a recession happens or especially with the coronavirus, you know, people are scared that they're not going to have a good future or they might die. So they're going to take steps to basically make them as safe as possible, if that makes sense. And actually, if you don't believe me, I'm actually going to go ahead and go to a very popular area in Los Angeles to see if there's any foot traffic and to see if it's actually busy. Let's go check it out.
All right, guys, good morning. It's currently 7.30 a.m. We're going to Huntington Beach to go surfing. I've never been surfing before. I don't know what to expect. This is literally just for a YouTube video, but now that I think about it, I think genuinely deep down, I've always wanted to try surfing, but I've never brought up the courage. It's intense. Like, when I was doing my research this morning, as in research, I mean YouTube videos, but when I was, like, looking it up, it's, like, kind of scary because if you don't ride a wave, you might get, like, you know, taken over, and a lot of people get injured by hitting their own board, and knowing my klutzy ass, I'm probably going to hit my own board so I really just don't want to get injured but I have a surf teacher I guess he's gonna be teaching me I found him on Airbnb experiences and this sounds so <laughs> sketchy and all together do you think this is safe mom yeah I found this random teacher on Airbnb experience okay. but I read the reviews and it's super positive so let's see if my surf instructor James can teach me how to surf but first we're going to Starbucks ah so good guys i'm literally so stupid i'm at the beach and i'm wearing white shoes and a white shirt ah! so i'm gonna take off my socks and just go barefoot because i don't i don't want to ruin my shoes all right let's go <laughs> Okay guys, so we're here in Huntington Beach, the center for surfing and outdoor life. And as you can see, there's absolutely nobody. I literally don't see anybody surfing right now and I am so concerned. What am I thinking? My surf instructor's here, okay. Oh my God! I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous, I'm so nervous. Okay. Hi. I'm good, are you James? Are we going down here? Uh, yeah, well, you can change. I got this okay. suit right here. So this is your suit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna pull this. Wait, over my... <laughs> <laughs> I'm good. I was like, what's going on? <laughs> I thought this was a good idea, okay? Please don't hate me. <laughs> All right, guys, so I'm back home from surfing. You guys should definitely check part two of this series where if you guys want to see me actually surf and conquer my biggest fear of water, I'll link it in the description box. I don't know how to swim, so why am I surfing? I don't know. All right, so number two of what will happen if the coronavirus does cause a recession is you're going to see companies start to have less confidence. During this time, again, people save up and they're not going to be able to take maybe massive risks. So you're going to see companies trade and travel less. So essentially what we're going to see is people maybe less Less investing in startups, companies, taking on a risk, and people are going to navigate to real estate and more stable forms of investment. And what this means is that there's typically a lack of innovation. People don't start as many businesses during this time because it's a big risk. You're going to see just people just chill maybe more at home. I genuinely think a lot of people are just going to give up on their dreams. Like if you've wanted to start a YouTube channel or if you have like a company, I think this is the time where you're going to start to see the B, C, and D players just fall off because things are getting harder. You know, I have a personal story. So I'm here in Los Angeles. Angeles right now and I'm only supposed to be here for the largest food expo in the world. It's called Expo West. This is an 84,000 person food conference and it got canceled and I'm here right now and I don't even know what to do because I was only here for a business trip and for one of my companies called Eat Like, we're a food subscription box, Expo West was going to be the time for us to actually grow our business and sign on brands but because of it got canceled like I'm literally here brandless and it is affecting my business because I'm not able to generate income from it. I definitely think and first I was freaked out because I was like what am I gonna do? I was supposed to do X, Y, Z, and I promised so many people I would pay them at this time. I was like freaking out. I realized that like, even though the in-person event got canceled, I was emailing brands that night like crazy. I was trying to connect with them online and I got a ton of responses. I definitely think if you're a good entrepreneur, not saying I'm the best entrepreneur, but you need to make whatever situation you are in happen. Like just work with it and don't fight it. Like I could easily sit there and complain and cry that Expo West got canceled, but I decided just to, you know, screw it, emailed a hundred brands 
of like, hey, I can't see you at Expo West, but this is what I can do for you today. And now at Eat Like, we're able to onboard, I believe, some really big brands coming up. So I just know that in my personal story, this literally happened a week ago. I think that it sucks and I'm not able to grow my company in the way I wanted to, but there are other options and you just have to be creative in that aspect. I guess this leads me to the third and final result, which is supply side shock. It's kind of like this never ending cycle, right? Imagine this diagram. If consumers spend less money, companies will not take as many risks, which means they're not gonna produce as many products, which means there's gonna be less resources for consumers. It's this never ending cycle where the more fear happens, the more it's gonna hold up our economy. And what you're gonna see is people are gonna start to fight for food and resources. I think already at the grocery store, there's no more hand sanitizer. And in the world, we're short of 170 million masks. So you're gonna see that due to the virus, it's gonna be an interesting time for retail because manufacturers are slowing down production due to all these behaviors. So what you're really gonna see is people are gonna make decisions out of fear. You're gonna see people already stocking up on food, getting more resources and just like holding up a lot of products. And it's just out of this fear. And I definitely think this fear is just basically, we just don't wanna get sick. We don't wanna run out of food and water. You're gonna start to see people taking extreme measures to do so. So you're probably like, hey, Jade, what does this mean for me? Great, I have to stock up, but what should I do now? So the good news is that as more and more people are going to be at home and staying safe from the outdoors, I definitely think it's actually a great opportunity to start the thing that you've wanted to that you've been stalling, whether it's a YouTube channel or you've been stalling about writing a book. Now that more companies and students are working at home, I think this is a great opportunity to start something that you've been scared of. I know I'm only 18 years old and I don't know much about the human existence, but a recession is not a bad thing. Thing. A lot of people start companies during this time if you have the ability to face the fear and not run away from it. I think this is the time for us to come together digitally, maybe not a person, but we can always support each other and use this time at home and face your fear and just take some time for yourself. This video is actually a three part series. I made a whole video about me facing my biggest fear, which is drowning. So check it out. In the next episode, sophomore year, me and Jade and our friend Evan decided to go to a lake Jade broke her finger trying to swim. I don't think I've ever seen Jade swim without holding on to something or without crying. <laughs> Me and my friends joke about it until this day, but ever since then, I was never able to swim again because I'm terrified of water. So in this video, I'm going to face my biggest fear. Ah! Any last words for you? Is this the end of you? I don't know. I'm kind of scared. I'm about to go in the water. I literally don't see anybody surfing right now, and I am so concerned. What am I thinking? You're not gonna miss me. Listen, I don't have the emotional capacity to miss or really feel anything anymore. <laughs>